I felt what can only be described as the love of God surrounding me, welcoming me, filling me with warmth and happiness. Today's NDE is by Giselle. I was in the hospital, semi-seated in bed, after giving birth to my first child. I was having a cup of coffee and chatting with the ladies I shared the hospital room with, who had also given birth recently. Suddenly, I felt as if I were bleeding. When I looked down, I saw a lot of blood. I called the nurse and was immediately taken to the operating room for dilation and curatage procedure. The doctor and nurse started to work on me. Since I was in a lot of pain, they administered anesthesia. I quickly went under and I don't know when it happened. I woke up, but only in my mind. My body was still asleep. I heard the nurse tell the doctor that they were losing me. He replied that they had to save me, that it was their responsibility since they had given me too much anesthesia without intubation. I suddenly became aware that my heart and lungs were silent and thought to myself, now I really must have died. At least I'm not in pain. My soul or spirit left my body and I found myself floating in a dark space. I was not afraid. I felt comfortable there. I thought it was very beautiful. I was still thinking like myself, feeling like myself. My memory and personality remained, and I could float in this space freely. I had something similar to my body, but it was made of a transparent and milky substance, like ghosts are described, with a slight glow. When I got bored of being there by myself without doing anything, I thought that there must be more than this. I asked God to take me where he was. I started to float, but I could not tell in which direction. I was gradually able to make out a small light and noticed that I was quickly traveling toward it with what seemed like a big tunnel. My arrival there is a little confusing. I was welcomed by beings who I remember as being very tall and made of incredible light. They loved me like no one had ever loved me. I felt what can only be described as the love of God surrounding me, welcoming me, filling me with warmth and happiness. To this day, when the suffering of this world makes me despair, I close my eyes and travel there. The fact that all of this will pass and I will return with them is a consolation to me. I remember thinking, at last I have returned home. My God, this is my home. I know that I spoke to them for a long time and they took me to another place. I don't remember walls, but I had the feeling that it was more enclosed. I saw something similar to a three-dimensional movie of my life up until that day. There was no judgment. They only showed me what was expected of me in certain situations, and that perhaps I hadn't behaved the way I should have. I remember vividly that it was expected that my soul controls my body, that the body is only the vehicle necessary for life on planet Earth, that we're not to let the vehicle control us. I saw where I had fallen short, and it was mainly by omission. Sometimes by laziness or not wanting to complicate my life, I had not helped someone that needed it. At that moment, my hands were available to God to respond to a person in need. I have tried hard to correct this, trying to see the best in others, acting as a bridge for God to tell someone their worth, how beautiful they look, or how much they are loved by God, and how important their friendship is. These may seem small and silly things, but they're very important to some people at certain times.
They told me that it was not my time, but that due to a medical mistake, I arrived home once again. I still had a lot to do and to learn, but under no circumstance did I want to return to Earth. I was going through a rough time in my life, and I was afraid to lose all those wonderful feelings. A being of light, even brighter and more loving, who could have been Jesus, asked them to show me part of what I still had to do on Earth and to show me my newborn son in the crib at the hospital. They told me that my son had a learning path depending on the fact that I would be his mother and that my decision would greatly affect his life. With all the pain in my heart, by the way I had no physical pain, I decided to return. They would have to erase almost all of my memories because they explained that if I remembered too much, I would not be able to handle the desire to return and would run the risk of committing suicide, which was considered wrong in that dimension. When I agreed to return, it was very difficult for me to decide to enter my body, so heavy, dense, encumbering, but a deal is a deal. I entered just at the time they were using the electrical metal plates to restart the heart. I heard the nurse say, Doctor, she has a pulse. I then fell asleep and woke up in the recovery room. I have to finish that which I promised, even if I don't remember what it is. I've tried to give the best of me this time. Not to say that I've achieved it, but I will keep trying to be better each day of my life. I try to see things and people in a positive light, to enjoy and give thanks to God for each moment that I live, for the air that I breathe, the fruit, the flowers, the animals and my four children and grandchildren. I wait impatiently, since it has been 32 years, for the day that I return home and rest from my passage through this life. I am not afraid of death, although I take good care of myself in order to keep my earthly vehicle in good condition and return it used but in working order. I like life in this place. Although I have suffered a lot, but it seems like this is the way that we learn and grow. I am not afraid of God. I feel only deep reverence toward Him. I know that He's my loving Father who's waiting for me and will welcome me with love and peace. The truth is that I want it to be over already. I want to return. Thank God my children are older now and will be able to continue with their life plans without me. Later, we will see each other again.